Hey again guys and welcome back to the Interchange Book 3 video series. Today we're going to be doing Unit 6. Now, today we are talking about describing problems, specifically using the verbs need and keep to help us describe problems and solutions to problems. So, let's get started. Okay. So I want you to look at this room, this apartment, and I want you to look at all the different things wrong with the apartment. So what is wrong with the apartment? Now I can see many different things wrong with this apartment, and I'm just going to look at a couple of them, okay? Starting here, right? So if we remember from the previous uh, video, what do we describe this problem as? The paint, right? and we can say that the paint is peeling right what about this fan okay definitely not correct I could say that the fan is broken right and this thing here let's look at this this is called the lamp shade a lamp shade and I could say that the lamp shade is damaged ooh the trash can right What's wrong with the trash can? Well, the trash can is full, right? Very full, actually. Ooh, and the clothes on the ground? What could we say? So the clothes are on the floor. And the last thing I'm going to look at is the plant. So what's wrong with the plant? I'm going to say the plant is dry. Okay. So these are the major problems, the major issues with this room that we're going to look at today. So now we looked at all the different problems, but how can these problems be fixed? So again, looking at the paint in the corner here, I'm going to say, well, the wall needs painting. Okay, that's going to fix the problem. The wall needs painting. And the broken fan, well, the fan needs fixing, obviously, right? And the damaged lampshade, what can we do about that? Well. Eh, the lampshade needs replacing, so we're just going to replace it. Um, what about the trash can? What are we going to do with the trash? Well, the trash needs to be taken out. Okay? And the clothes on the floor, what can we say? Well, the clothes need to be picked up. Okay? And lastly, what about the tree? What about the little plant? What can we do to fix this problem? We can say the plant needs to be watered. Okay? So we're going to look at the grammar in these sentences to talk about how to find solutions or what needs to happen in certain situations. Okay? Okay, so the first one we're going to look at is using need with the passive voice. But if you don't remember what the passive voice is, let's just remember the active voice. So this sentence is the active voice. It says, someone needs to take out the trash, right? Now the active voice is the active voice because it begins with someone doing the action. So someone does the action, and so therefore, this is the doer. And the active voice starts with the doer, okay? Then we have our verbs, right? So needs is not really the principal verb. It's important in the sentence, but take out is the action verb. That's where the action is. Now remember, usually when I use need, I usually use to, and then I use my verb. So needs to take out the trash. So the trash is receiving this action. So that's why I call this the receiver. And this is the active voice. Remember, the doer, the action, and the receiver is the active voice. However, we're talking about the passive voice today. So if I want to talk about what needs to happen, I don't necessarily need to say someone, right? That's not the important part of this sentence. The important part is that the trash, and that somebody needs to take the trash out. Well, in the passive voice, if we remember, I talk about the receiver first, because this is the most important part of the sentence. So I say the trash, right? And then I'm going to use needs to again, right? But instead of my normal verb, I'm going to use be 
and the past participle. And that's the structure, that's the equation essentially for the passive voice. So because I'm using needs to, I always use be, but the past participle of take out is taken out. So in this context, I'm saying the trash needs to be taken out. And notice I'm not saying who. I'm not telling you who's going to take it out, who needs to take out the trash, right? That's not important. The important part is the trash, right? So this is the passive voice with need to explain what needs to happen or what needs to be done. Okay, let's look at another type of need uh, to describe what needs to happen. If I remember the paint, right? In the corner, the paint was peeling. So obviously we need to paint. But I don't need to say we need to paint the wall. Instead, I can say the wall needs painting, right? If it's one wall, I say the wall needs painting. If I said all the walls, for example, the walls need painting, same idea, right? But notice the difference here. If I'm using needs or need, why do I use needs with the wall? And why do I use need and no S when I'm talking about all the walls? Well, the answer is the wall is one thing. It's one object. It's almost like saying it. And if we remember, when I use it, I always use that S on the verb, on the present tense verbs, right? The third person. So this is one thing, and so I need to use the S, right? But the walls, that's plural, right? That's not one thing, it's many things. So that's like the idea of they. Now with they, I do not use the S, right? So there is no third person with they, or in this context, the walls. But if I use need or needs, I can use a gerund to describe what needs to happen, right? So the walls need painting or the walls need painting. Good. All right, so let's look at the different problems we saw. And remember, there's always two ways to say what needs to happen. I can use need in the passive voice and I can use need and the gerund. So if we look at these clothes on the ground, I could say, in the passive voice, the clothes need to be picked up. Or, with the gerund, how can I say that? Right, the clothes need picking up. Okay, using that gerund, passive voice, be in the past participle. Always the past participle. Okay, let's look at another one. Okay, so if you remember the fan, we had a problem with the fan. The fan was broken. So if I want to describe what needs to happen in the passive voice, I can say the fan needs to be fixed or in the gerund, the fan needs fixing. Good. Okay, let's look at another one. All right, so here we have the plant. If you remember the plant, right? We could say in the passive voice, what needs to be done? Right, the plant needs to be watered. So if you're thinking, wait, what is watered? Water is actually a verb, and that means to give something water. So you can use that like a verb, to water a plant. In this context, the plant needs to be watered. In the gerund, again, using water, I can say, the plant needs watering with the gerund. All right, very good. Okay, last one. Let's look at the lamp. Remember, this is called the lamp shade. So what can we do to the lamp shade? Well, in the passive voice, I can say, the lamp shade needs to be replaced. And in the gerund, the lamp shade needs replacing. Okay? So both of these are okay to use, right? I think the passive voice sounds uh, the most common to talk about what needs to be done for particular things and situations. Good. So now it's time to practice. So get ready to 
make some good sentences with the grammar we just learned. All right. So, what needs to be done in this kitchen? Okay, all of these things are in the kitchen. And what needs to be done? Now, use the verb in blue to make sentences with the grammar. So you can pause the video and think about how am I going to say these using need and the passive voice or need and the gerund. Okay, so I'm going to start with clean over here in the microwave, right? So I can say the microwave needs to be cleaned, that's the passive voice, or the microwave needs cleaning. Good. Let's look at the refrigerator and the stinky food. Ugh. So throw out, I can use, and I'm going to say the food in the fridge needs to be thrown out or the food in the fridge needs throwing out. So thrown is the past participle of throw. Okay? And that's using the passive voice and that's using the gerund. Let's look at the dishes. What can we say about these dishes? Well, we can say that the dishes need to be washed. Right? Or the dishes need washing. So both of these are okay. Let's look at the floor. The verb is sweep, so this is the action to sweep. So what can we say about the floor? We can say the floor needs to be swept, right? And swept is the past participle. Or the floor needs sweeping, using the gerund. Very good. The last one, the trash, take out. Okay, what can we say? The trash needs to be taken out and the trash needs taking out. Very good. So, good job. I hope you understand this because we're going to try something new. Okay, now we're going to talk about continuous problems. We talked about solutions to problems using need, but now we're going to look at describing the problem, especially problems that are continuous. So, are there any problems that continuously happen in your house? Well, this girl, Jessica, has a lot of problems in her house. And she says, I'm tired of all these problems. Ugh, this is so frustrating. I can't take it anymore. There are so many problems happening in my life right now. So, I love my dog Marley and all, but she keeps getting the floor dirty when she comes inside the house. My roommates are fun, but someone keeps leaving dirty dishes in the sink for me to wash. It's so frustrating. Usually cooking helps me to relax, but the oven keeps burning all my food. And then when the smoke comes out of the oven, the alarm keeps going off. It's like the loudest thing ever. Ah, I need a vacation. Okay. So now after watching the video, we're going to look at some of the grammar that Jessica was using to describe her problems in her house. Now, if we noticed, she used the verb keep, right? And she was using a gerund after the verb to keep. Now, this is a rule in English. Most of the time, we always use a gerund. Remember, that's the ing verbs. We always use a gerund after the verb to keep to describe actions that happen regularly or actions that don't stop happening. Okay? So let's look at one of the examples that Jessica used. She said something about the oven. What did she say? What was the problem? Right. She said, the oven keeps burning my food. So here we see keeps, right? The third person S because it's one oven. So the oven keeps and the gerund burning my food. So here we see that example. So it's a consistent problem and it happens regularly. But it doesn't always have to be problems, right? For example, if I look at this person, lots of people calling, right? So I could just say, people keep calling me. Again, using keep and the gerund to talk about something that happens regularly, consistently, something that doesn't stop. Or let's think about the weather, okay? The weather. So I could say, it keeps raining until dry season. 
So again, it's talking about something that happens all the time, regularly. This, the rain does not stop, right? It keeps raining until the dry season. So again, we're using keep plus a gerund to describe things that happen regularly or things that don't stop happening. Good. All right, so let's just review what we saw today in this video. We saw keep and the gerund, which is ing, for actions that happen regularly or that don't stop happening. So, for example, the dishes in the sink. Jessica said, someone keeps leaving dishes in the sink, right? Keeps leaving dishes in the sink. All right. Now, we talked about how to describe the problem, continuous problems, with this grammar. But what happens when we want to talk about what we need to do? So to describe what needs to happen, we can use need or needs and the gerund, or needs to plus be in the past participle, and that's the passive voice, remember? So let's look at what we can do about these dishes. Well, we can say, for example, the dishes need washing. Obviously, right? The dishes need washing if we have dishes in the sink. And we could also say with the passive voice, the dishes need to be washed. Good. So I hope this was helpful in learning how we use keep and a gerund to talk about continuous actions, especially continuous problems. And then we also can use need plus a gerund or needs to and the passive voice structure to talk about what needs to happen. So, good luck. Thanks for watching, guys. And I'll see you later.